In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God's Word is creative and powerful. God's Word brings change. God's Word, when planted in the heart of a sinful human being, it can change that heart, turns it around. It rights its wrongs. It brings life where death once sat and puts forth growth where emptiness previously resided. This is why we gather around the Word right here each week. This is why we do well to read, mark, learn, and take to heart that Word throughout the week. But there are a number of different ways the human heart can react to God's Word. And so Jesus tells us a parable this morning to help us understand. He says, A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell along the path and was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the air devoured it. And some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered away because it had no moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. And some fell into good soil and grew and yielded a hundredfold. The basic concept of this parable is easy to see. A sower sows the same seeds, and his scattering them leads to four separate outcomes. The first seed turns into bird seed based on where it lands, on the path where people walk and where birds find food. The second grouping finds growth, but it is short-lived because of the rocky soil. Next, we see seeds among thorns, which choke out any life or growth that followed their landing. And finally, we find a fruitful yield from among those sown seeds in the fourth and final scenario. Good soil resulted in good results. But as we don't no doubt know, Jesus is not teaching us about the biology behind plant life, nor is he giving us agricultural advice. Our first clue is how he ends this parable, speaking to those who had gathered to hear him teach, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is a peculiar saying, and one he offers from time to time throughout his earthly ministry. In fact, this saying can lead to confusion or inspire questions even today. Why are only some giving these ears to hear? And what makes those ears different than the ones found on the sides of every person's head? The images offered and specific example of seeds that he uses show us an early and important truth. At no point do these seeds choose to become plants. That is set by factors outside of their authority or ability. In the same way, we do well to recognize that this parable points to the promise that faith is a gift and work of God, something He gives us through His Word. Not only this, but we also recognize that where these seeds land, particularly the quality of the soil in which they land, highlights the receptivity of those whom He describes as seeds that grow into plants and produce a yield. Rather than giving the full meaning of this parable to those who first heard it, he points to the wisdom that comes from outside of us as he describes these ears to hear. In time, however, as our reading continues, his disciples ask him what it all means. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but for others they are in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Here again we find a passage that shows us how Jesus handled His identity and the purpose for which He took on our human flesh. It was common for Him to bring miracles of relief and healing, only to tell those who had received them not to speak of this extraordinary work. Even after showing a preview of His divine nature to Peter, James, and John in His transfiguration, which we examined together two weeks ago, He told them also not to tell anyone of what they saw on that mountain until after He had been raised from the dead. His greatest miracle, 
followed his perfect sacrifice on the cross. There, in the sight of many who hated him and mocked him and called for his death, he suffered and died for every sinner who had ever lived or ever would live. His public and shame-ridden execution, with his innocent blood going into the ground, brought forth the Father's acceptance and absorbed his wrath against human sin. They planted his dead body in a tomb, and he sprang back forth to life three days later, bringing in his resurrection the certainty that all who look to him with the eyes of faith and hear his word with the ears he gives us to hear will also rise again to eternal life on the last day. This is the message of God's word that saves us. This is the saving promise for all people. God's word, his life-changing word, points to this as we read it and memorize it and sing it and share it. This is what brings change and growth and what brings the only rescue from sin, death, and the devil. Though he withheld the meaning of the parable with its original hearers, he provided it for the disciples and for us today. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones along the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. And this we see what the world chooses not to see or acknowledge. The devil, our enemy, hates us and is continually working around us. His efforts are seen more clearly as Jesus continues to explain his parable. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. But these have no root. They believe for a while and in time of testing fall away. Well, thankfully Jesus is speaking and offering this teaching to those who have ears to hear, but those who lived 2,000 years ago. This testing he describes, it must certainly have come and gone long ago before any of us were born or came to recognize the realities of the world around us. This testing that he speaks of in this parable, it couldn't be in the headlines even today and must not have anything to do with federal, state, or municipal governments forcing shutdowns or the altering of one's appearance in apparel before coming into God's very house to hear his word and to hold it fast. Of course not. And of course, this is but one test that we have all gone into together as a congregation and as God's believing people throughout this country and this world. And it is a test that has not yet ended. It has divided many people living among us, including those who once joined us regularly each week to hear God's Word and receive the Lord's Supper. Testing can lead to failure and despair. Only God's Word can lead us out of such sadness and danger. And there are many more types of tests that we encounter, as our own lives prove. At the end of our lives comes death, and it is something that many fear. But only those who do not look to Jesus Christ as its sole solution with the eyes of faith and the ears that hear His Word. He continues, And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. This description offers a glimpse into the lives of each of us here. Many of us at St. John's are far more comfortable than those who came before us, and yet we often find reasons to turn away from God's call to thankfulness and faithful service. When we experience perhaps even a slight feeling of uncomfort, it often draws our attention to itself and away from the Word. So with these words, Jesus calls us to see all that He has given us and to look to Him as its source. Everything we have, including our many comforts, have first come from Him, and He gives them to us and calls us to give some of it back. This is why we gather an offering at each service, in order that we might demonstrate our thankfulness to all He has given us and to confess our faith that He will continue to provide in times of comfort and discomfort. 
the generosity of those who came before us, giving sacrificially for the work of our congregation, is a good motivation for us to use well and for us to use what, we, what they gave and to further it for those who will follow us. The world mocks this, as it does all of God's Word, and we stand against that mockery rather than being choked out by its thorny lies. Finally, Jesus concludes his explanation. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit with patience. These are simple words. Did you hear them? Did you take them to heart? Will you share them? Jesus' parable points to the many dangers that follow the distribution of His life-changing Word. In what ways are you reacting to it? Our Lord speaks to us and changes us through His Word, and if our lives reflect otherwise, then we need to take a look at the ground on which we are standing while looking also into our own hearts. That heart will one day stop beating. And the giver of this parable is the only one who went through such an event and went on to overcome it himself. He shares his victory here each week in worship, and this promise is for all who hear his word and keep it, bearing the fruit of repentance through the Spirit's guiding work. The seeds in Jesus' parable do not grow and produce outside of God's purpose or will. As Jesus clearly explains, the seed in this parable is the very Word of God. Unfortunately, while the church is given this important task of spreading that life-changing Word throughout all the world, it is not always received well. These results, however, as quite trackable and visible as they have been throughout history, are not to stop us from continually scattering the seeds of God's Word with our words with our lives, with our actions, and as we face death when it comes for us. Amen. We stand together now and sing the words of the offertory on page 192.